I cannot believe that we found a cinematic robot that you can put in your house. DIY Photography's coverage of NAB 2023 is sponsored by Sennheiser, Jia Yun, Small Rig, and b &H. Hi, I'm here at NAB 2023 at the Exhibit booth with Anoop. Anoop, I'm seeing this robot and I'm blowing away. Please tell me a little bit about it. Thank you. Um, yeah, you know, this is, uh, you know, first up front, this is a prototype. It's not ready. It's, it's not finalized, uh, which is a good thing because we're here. We're trying to collect as much feedback as we can to understand what people want. But the mission here is to build a six-axis robotic system that competes with the robotic arms. So a typical cinema robotic arm is an arm taken from the automotive sector and retrofitted for the applications of cinema, right? But now, so you know, the cost of that system to own is you know 100k plus. To rent is 20k, and so it, it's it's again you know it's it's just out of reach, right? And it's like this golden goose that people have been watching but not been able to access, right? Yeah, I've I've seen the bolt outside here with the motorcycle. I mean, just size-wise, it's huge. It's massive. It's a truck. It's a, it needs a truck to operate and and transport, right? So, uh, you know, they have their applications, but. Uh, with enough work and with enough uh, uh, targeted development, we can make a system made for cinema that offers uh, robotic arm level precision, accuracy, smoothness, and speeds, uh, but at a fraction of the cost. There has never been a robotic arm made for this applications, and so we want you know we've taken that mission on, and uh, you know we're working towards that end goal of providing that at, 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 at less than one-tenth of that cost for ownership. So walk me through the different component and access that you have. And is, does this have a name already? Uh, we're working on that, right? So we, we, ha we had one which was Egypt, right? And so if you Google Egypt, there is you know, some things that come up, some information. Um, the thing is, though, I, I don't want people to think this is just a motorized jib because a jib is not meant for precise, repeatable, and fast movements. That's where the robotic arms come in. So this is a hybrid in between a jib uh, or a techno crane, a mini techno crane, uh, and a robotic arm, right? It's, it's, it's in between those two systems. And so what's going on here is that we have uh, six axes, right? We have two in the base, and then we have a booming mechanism with a counterbalance, and then we have the end effector with three more axes, a pan tilt and a roll. And that gives you all the same capabilities uh, that you would see in a robotic arm. Have you ever considered adding a dolly to the setup? Uh, yeah, without a doubt. Um, you know, we have some experience with dollies uh, with, with our original product. And uh, a lot of people have recommended that. So I think uh, once, once we've ironed out some of the issues and details that we're still working on, we'll start to work on a dolly next. And I, I know that operating a robotic garb can be quite complex. So. How do you handle that mission of making robotic arms accessible in terms of configuring them and creating the shot? No, good question. I think, uh, you know, there's obviously the core, core goal of making it low cost enough so that people can have this in their studios. But other than that, there is also usability. You know, those big arms, you need an operator, right? You need an operator and you need to have somebody with a ton of experience. So we want to tackle that challenge as well. The way we're going to go about it is on a couple of fronts. One is in the robotic, uh, in the software side, there'll be a simulator. You can simulate these moves, and these moves are like assigning a, a start position, an end position, and a target. So you want to focus on this thing. And now in between that, you get a curve that gets generated, whether it's you know uh, an orbit around that item, or it's a linear path around that, and then it'll keep that object in focus uh, automatically by doing that math itself. That's one way. The other way is to just grab it and move it to a position. So what that's called collaborative robots. You'll be able to grab this thing, move it to a position, orient it, grab it to another position, orient it, grab it to another position. That gets generated and now you can play that right off the bat or you can go into the software, adjust that, tune that, replay that and, uh, and then you know get that perfect shot. And then finally there's one more mechanism of control and user interface and that's actually guiding it with um, an Apple device. So you'll have the ability to grab your phone, show it and teach it a shot. So say I want to uh, do a shot of where I'm getting close to an object and then I do a pull over it, right, an orbit over that item, right? You'll be able to run that move, That'll, that data will get transferred over to our app 
You can smooth it out, tune it, change it, and then the robot will play it, and it can play it over and over again, uh, you know, for as long as you need to do that to get that perfect shot. Lastly, all of our software framework that we developed with our pan tilt slider system, the virtual production connections, um, the AI software integration, the networkability, um, the easy keyframes, time lapse, dragon frame integration, all of these things that we've done to make you know, the best pan tilt slider system that we possibly could, all of that software work will transition over very fluidly to this device. I'm hooked. Is there a timeline or an estimated timeline yeah, for when this will go to market? Yes, we're targeting uh, end of August. What we've started to do now is take pre-orders to get an un understanding of you know who is interested and what that market is like. And uh, we haven't really done much outreach, but we've already get, gotten about 20 or 25 uh, you know pre-orders with these are people putting deposits, you know, showing strong interest and. Uh, you know, it's giving us an idea, yes, there's a strong market. And obviously, uh, NAB was a great idea for this because anybody that walks by, the first thing they, you know, there's two things. One is what's going on with the virtual production and then what's going on with this system here. And price-wise, what are we looking at? Yeah, so we're looking at, uh, you know, the goal was we need a 10x cost reduction when we started this mission, right? And so we looked at what is the average cost of the robotic arms. Now, it can range. It can go from... Uh, 100k up to a million, right? So we're just like, let's go with the 100k option. How can we go uh, 10x lower than that? And then, um, and then, you know, uh, a cherry on the top. And so we're going with a target price of 7,000, right? And so that'll be this version. In the future, we'll release other variations, lower cost and higher cost. So the idea will be to have a small, medium, and large, um, all all different price points. And uh, it'll be 5,000, 7,000, and 10,000. That sounds mind-blowing for the price and technology. Thank you very much for showing us this, this new technology. Um, stick around, we're going to give you some more news from the floor. Udi Tirosh with DIYPhotography.net, NAB 2023.